Welcome everyone to the 286th weekly MLP Drawing School Live Critique Stream. It's like August 24th already somehow. The world has only slightly ended. But we're there. I haven't drawn enough centaurs yet. Uh... You could be in an entire centaur world. I could. <laughs> Available on Netflix now. Yeah. That's Use our it. code. <laughs> <laughs> Use oh code gosh. horse for yeah. horses. Yeah. Our drawing world. Uh yeah, so as always, um we got a small horde of people joining us today. In fact, currently we have equal critiquers to art, which is wonderful. We got Alleyclaw. Hello. We got Pixinop. Ha. Uh, we got Fluffy's Eye. Hello. And we got Moi. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. A bunch of cool me. artists. Well, some of the weather's hot, but the people are cool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> weather's cool enough here. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you got any art you'd like to submit for critique, please feel free to. And um, if you're feeling a little bored or getting stuck on a piece of art, you know what you should do? You should try and uh, give some constructive criticism to some other artists asking for help. It can be very useful. You know, mm -hmm. maybe loosen up some of those gears and just give you something else to focus on for a few minutes. You better. Oh, we're watching. Oh, no. No, uh, no. Yeah. Uh... All right. Um, every single picture submitted today is by someone in our Discord. Now, the first one was submitted to the Reddit four minutes before the stream. So they win double points for this one. So they get to go first. And they're first anyway. <laughs> So let's do a drawing owls. Buddy, feel free to unmute yourself. We got questions for you. Mostly horse related questions. Sweet. Right. Um, yeah. You have yeah, any questions true. for us, first of all? <laughs> yeah. It's mostly anatomy. Like, um, I don't think I did a neck right, along with maybe the muzzle, too. Or just like <clears throat> point out whatever you think is wrong. I know that's vague, but you know, just kind of start into. I was gonna look at the 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 back, but it's being done. Hey. Doing my best. The best is goodest. Yeah. You got someone. Doing a, an amazing drawing over here. Uh, it's just it's just a basic best, kind best of uh, no, that's you. You're looking at me again. <laughs> um, the basics the basics where the neck kind of feels off is that um, it's just kind of sticking on the body instead of flowing mm. into the body, like uh, like people have drawn in red over here, Pixie, I believe. Um, it, it's it usually more has a flow into both parts of the body. It connects to the chest right. rather than um sticking into the but that just is just to help it have a little bit more flow maybe at weirder angles you might have the neck kind of uh poke into the body mm -hmm. but that's for very extreme angles we might have yeah definitely should have done the side like... shot you guys did there yeah. well oh. do that the next time then thanks yeah yeah, it's it's mostly so. Let me let me erase some of these lines. Uh, uh. Hmm. With the back, you tend you do have you know there is definitely a difference between sort of the back of the head shape, or where the back of the head is, and where the neck is. But it tends to be a fairly uh, uh, there doesn't tend to really be too much of this overlap thing. Unless they're sort of like, you know, turning their head, in which case the overlap will go like, you know, something like that to show they're turning their head. But for like a pose like this, it's just going to be like something simple like that. Hmm. 
back of the neck depends, but usually you'll see a similar sort of thing over there as well. From looking at it from this sort of an angle, anyway, it's it's sort of um, let me get rid of this stuff. You see it like over here, where right. I sort of because because the back of the neck sort of tends to go like directly into the spine almost. You don't tend to have too much of a situation when you're looking at the back of the neck, where it's sort of the back comes off from it like this. You tend to have something more like you know. Something more like that, the the back of the neck sort of thing. For the front of the neck, I tend to have this like little, you know, little little kick in to just sort of help connect everything. Hmm. And you know, yeah, you can look to right reference on. that stuff and all that. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Necks and how necks connect are like weird and annoying and stuff. So yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah oh, go ahead. For the main um, overlapping on the the your L, your body parts of it. So you you've basically made a saw blade with how your hair is because it's all one unit mm. and doesn't have any overlap. Um, so just. Take your lines, shoot them past where they're going, and make sure they sort of flow towards the root of where the hair is going to spawn from. So in this case, they're mohawks, so they all go towards the neck. Uh, and that'll just help give a bit more depth to the hair, break up the, the saw blade look. Yeah, definitely do work on hair and... Thanks. Problem. Well, most importantly, just have, just have fun drawing ponies. Like, if anatomy is something you're working on improving, just mm. a few things. Just always have references and just have fun with the references. Don't worry about, like, copying, quote-unquote, or just have fun. You draw, draw, figure out, do weird poses, even if they turn out wrong. Hmm. You know, have fun with it, because, like, learning learning anatomy is going to take a while, um, oh, yeah, I know, at least like for me, lifetime. like there's so much, and there's so many animals, and there's so many different bone structures, and it, it's easy with pony because we just have ponies to focus on. But don't don't feel like you need to be perfected right away. Just enjoy yeah. it, and you, you can dig into like little stuff at a time. Like, oh, I'm gonna draw a bunch of weird back legs to break down and figure out, like, oh, okay, so they kind of have these like shapes to them, and I can make them. I don't know. Uh, Bend and stretch in ways, and hmm. have fun with it. Yeah, it's a good idea. Thanks. Lots of weird stuff. Drawing is fun, and the oh, best yeah. way to get better at drawing is to keep it fun for yourself. Because you know, then you'll keep on drawing. Hmm. All right. And also, look at this. It's the best drawing I've ever seen. No. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. It, it's up there. It is pretty good. <laughs> Still a doodle. Ellie, Ellie is, is the, the best. She's amazing. Best artist out of everyone here by a mile. Ah, no. yep. I can't. I can't accept that. <laughs> you will, you will take these compliments. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is torture. Yeah, this is how we torture you. Five minutes. Come on. What did I wrong? How did I wrong you people today? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, didn't didn't give yourself enough cookies. Self care oh, is important. That's fair. Yeah. I should make some. Cookies. I'll bake some cookies after this. Okay. You, you Ooh, right. Oops, I've dropped the tablet. Good, good. This is a See, problem. The, the pigeon problem? will deliver them to me this time. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, no more. Uh, no more shit. No more. No more. You know, if there's a cookie <laughs> delivered from a pigeon, it will just be in the form of it. <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you got any more questions for us, Owl? Uh, none so far, or well, none at the moment. Kind of pointed out everything I wanted to know. Thanks. Sweet. Heck yeah. Keep drawing. I love it. Keep drawing. Amazing Keep drawing. You. I love it. It's so do. cute. No time yes. for cute. No time for work. No time for school. <laughs> Just art. I do want to yeah. say, I do want to say, um, I really like your muzzles. Your muzzles are coming along really nicely. Yes. It looks really good. I like like the the mouth. You got a really Ooh. good muscle going on. Yeah. Thanks. That look good. 
Yeah, that's definitely good to hear. Keep it up. All right. Fluffy's eye. What is know that? From a few places. <gasps> yes. Um, the best Zomag. artist all around. The number one pony artist in the fandom. You know that Fluffy's eye? Touche. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hello. Sorry, I was just uh, I accidentally knocked some change off of my desk and it disappeared, so I was trying to find it. Um, ah, where did it go? Here it is. Yeah, that was, I'm not sure on the legs. I was struggling a lot on the uh, one closest to us, this back right, and and the front right one too. Ah, don't give me the thing. Just, uh, I'm not sure if it's joined right, I'm not sure if it's bent right, or if it's too short. And the back left, generally just the legs I'm not... <laughs> good with i'm not sure if the wing's right i'm not sure if the like other wing that we can see there is is positioned right i'm not sure if the head's too small or if the ear's too small or, or what i don't know <laughs> it mm. seems like a bit of a mess front to me i was not on my best game when i drew this <laughs> yeah it's, it's a hard pose mm. i like to have the sort of like shoulder punch but i think it just came out looking like the, um, the front right like it's sort of bent weirdly. Like I, I feel know. like um to to enhance this because this is like it's not quite side view. We almost have the slightest twist, to, so we see the butt a little more. Like there's a little it's in between three fourths and yeah, side it's view. basically meant to be sort of like back three fourths mostly. Yeah, I just might, mm. not, might not have have presented that well. And I I think something that I I I have white as my color because I was about to color something out. That's, that's very <laughs> good on a on a mostly white. I, thing I know. Like <laughs> so whenever I like push for um those back angles where we can see a little bit more of the butt, the way I do mm. the front leg and like you can still have like the the pudge coming out, but instead of the pudge going back like that, I I like to push like almost like a little that way like there's just a Ooh. slight bit of the body because then you get that overlap where it's like okay there's that slight stack ah. on top of it and then you changing get like, the overlay changing the overlap might help a lot actually it's a yeah and it doesn't have to be big because we're not at an extreme angle just just like the littlest something to show that like oh that leg is kind of connecting and it folds against the chest like in a different way than we would see yeah. it uh, I like to have this little bit of this little bit of fluff where we have this bit here, like that. that that's mm. sort of what this line is. The leg goes in and it sort of becomes this this like fluff shape. But um, uh, mm. it would be good to have the body overlap. So I, could, I suppose I could sacrifice a bit of fluff. And this is you, you another can, way of making it. You can move the fluff like right down there, just, just like right. a little sneaky fluff at the the and cross juncture. The front bit would the, does that make it have like a weird shape from the angle? Or? I th I think if if you look uh, at what was okay, there. <laughs> oh good. You you see this bit where sort of this shoulder sort of is in front of the uh sort of body, I think. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's uh probably a good thing to sort of consider when you're at this sort of an angle. How how the shoulder will probably be sort of in front of this line at least a little bit, kinda of, sorta. Of. Mm-hmm. Oh, these back legs are just so inconsistent. I mean, like, look at this. <laughs> yeah, the, the hocker here is lower than the other one, and it, until just <laughs> just earlier than the stream, the hoof was like here, and I had to move it down. <laughs> and and it just, the curve is wrong. It's just, it's I, just I, I think I think what will probably help here is considering sort of where things are placed on the ground. Yeah, so like if we're looking at this from above, it. yeah. Could just be like you know, boom, mm -hmm. boom, sort of thing. Yeah, boom. boom. It was just a matter. Of, it was more a matter of execution than understanding. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Just move the leg, mm. or shorten the the first yeah. bone on the leg, just because it's a little bit long. Uh, mm -hmm. Just based on some quick measurements of the other one. I was going to ask if there was any more any ways I could make the pose more interesting or dynamic. Because aside from the horrible inconsistency of the legs and the the massive like mm. badly uh, arrangement of this leg, 
Uh, I just it seems very static, but I couldn't really think of a way to make the. I, I can normally make standing poses look interesting, at least from the front. I make them look quite nice, but from the back, I couldn't figure out how to make it look not weird. So the legs are kind of together, and it just looks very uniform and weird. From, mm. the, way, from the way you have them right now, it makes it look like the character has been at a full stop and has been waiting mm -hmm. for a period of time rather than mid stride. Is that what yeah. you're going for? Um, I mean, they just, it's for a rest sheet. They just wanted like a standing picture, but I just, I feel like I want a more interesting standing pose than what I drew originally. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I'm, I'm messing about a little bit. Just trying to yeah. trying out this sort of thing where, oh my God, uh, all my buttons are messed up. Where some, Oh. Yeah, I would. I would suggest exactly what Pixie had drawn, where you just kind of like kick one leg out one way and the other leg out the other way. Uh -huh. No, it's done often, but it <laughs> it looks like it more dynamic, right? Gives the character movement. Yeah. It looks super nice if this one also was like sort of pushed back a bit and balanced, maybe. That'd be good. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. I like the. I like the way you think. Maybe you should consider becoming an artist. Ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, silly. Are there sort of with... other Oh, sorry. I was. I was just going to mention with this sort of pose, the way that it's sort of positioned, it it's almost like if we're looking at it from above, I'm almost tempted to be like, do something like this, where it's like. Yeah. It's like boom boom could, sort of thing. Yeah, I could see that. Mm. They have to represent it more than they have already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, is it is the other proportions okay? Right before the stream, uh, I sort of redrew the wing because it was like really, really small. It's like mm. it was like. It was like this, and I'm like, no, it's not right. Uh, but I, I, I did also at some point have to make the head bigger, I think, and I'm not sure if it's still too small or if the ear, the ear just seems a bit. When I looked at it today for the first time after a break, it, I was like, that ear is very stubby. But I don't know if I'm just seeing things. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. it looks okay to me, like the sizes of stuff. Yeah. It, lo it looks a little, the... little bit stubby than your usual stuff. Yeah, I think it's a bit. Looks, looks it's it's like appropriate for like. In general, but just like it's different than my usual stuff. Mm. <laughs> yep, yeah, I, I think I think what I'm seeing is that if the pose is leaning a little bit more towards something like this, like with that twist, I'd probably bring, I'd probably grab all of this and just shift it that way, just a tiny bit. But with kind of the pose as is, with with the pose as is, I think. It might just be a case of this overlap being a little bit interesting. And maybe just like, you know, do something like that without that uh, little tiny bit of white. Uh, sorry, without that like little tiny overlap down I'm there. Wondering if there should be like a twist in the next scene or if that's yeah. too much. I don't really know how to make that work anyway. I think it, yeah, I think it, yeah. It. yeah. Just you know, small. Doesn't need to be a lot. Can can even just be like, you know, draw this for like a little reference line and then just have like a little bit of like <laughs> fluff or something. Bit of detailing. Alluding to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Like yeah, illustrating that twist in the neck. If if they even like have any sort of accessories or something like that, you could even be like Hey, here's like them wearing yeah. a like little necklace or something else, whatever. I don't believe they do, but yeah, it would look good. Have have them wearing a, a sash. It helps with positioning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like scarves. <laughs> Necklaces. That's super good. But yeah, thank you. Okay, Zai Zai stuff. Your stuff is like always super cool. I love it. Oh super cute. Yeah, super thank you. No, you. No. 
<laughs> all right, y'all fight over who's the cutest, and the winner is all of us. Don't don't yeah. let any of us near a doorway near each other because it'll just be constantly no you, no after you, no you. <laughs> you have CPC just uh, running through the window. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah, not run and jump. Know, she'll just break down the window. Own, <laughs> we have to have our own tactical entrances into the house, into the MLPDS towers. Is what you're saying? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> a secret entrance for each of us. I'll tunnel. Right, I'll tunnel into the floorboards. <laughs> All right. Does I'll that have like answer? a Hogwarts esque secret passage. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Sweet. <laughs> Let's roll on to our next one. Uh, which is. Yeah, Embroidered equations. Yeah. A lovely if... M piece. Oh. Um, there are there's always super good. I love it. I love the fluff. Is the cute it's little fluff. They're not here, but they're. You've done this I can't watch the work. stream, yeah. but just after some critique on this in general as a reference sheet and also the cutie mark, the idea being a slightly shredded heart where the green's glowing slightly. The the cutie mark is a, is is very like high detail for what a cutie mark usually is, but it's cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love it. Like if you want to go like if you're trying trying to be sort of like akin to the show, well, I you know your designs are very like creative and interesting anyway, so already they're like. Out, out there for what we would see as like background ponies and stuff, but the the yeah, Q, I always like try to design cutie marks in the way that they look in the show. That being sort of very interesting, but in the sort of they, they sort of have like a clip art style to them. Um, but I, I like what you've got here. It's very it's very cool to look at, and I think it blends really well with like the sort of green like arcane markings going up the leg or whatever that is. It's very cool. I like that sort of like that sort of like asymmetrical. Like mystical markings over one of the limbs. Now you say I, I, slightly shredded heart. <laughs> I'd say I'd say you're not going to refund on this heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I am interested mm. in like. So they said the the it's supposed to be green glowing. I think the only thing in my mind that suggests it's glowing is the slight like light but the fact that it's actually just changing the dark red into lighter red doesn't really yeah. tell me you it's can lit see up. it you, you can see it on the actual pony but um it it is it is harder to see on this this uh sort of standalone view but ironically that's the part where it would actually be visible whereas it's kind of hard to make glow happen on a very light colored character you can just about see it on this one but it is it, uh, mostly in the way that the actual green color blends. You can't really make white any whiter, um, and I can tell just by looking at this is off white. But it's uh, it's it's very hard to actually apply something sort of glowy looking on a character that's very light like this, unless you put them in like heavily shaded and atmospheric scenes constantly. Um, mm. I, but I, I I am also, and again, this doesn't like super uh, equate for your art because you. Uh, often have very interesting designs that trying to incorporate specific things. Um, uh, but usually, I try to go away from anything uh, in terms of like cutie marks that have like a, a glow to them because it just it looks kind of strange. Because uh, even if the cutie mark you want to go more high detail than the usual sort of clip art style, having a cutie mark be like a light or a glow, unless you do it in a very stylistic way. Which if we had like a pony from the show with say a lantern. The way that they do the glow would be sort of like a maybe a, a sort of two tone yellow sort of banding circles around the lantern to so, oh yeah look it's like a the lantern glow but it's not actually like lighter because you know if if it, the cutie mark actually looks like it's glowing uh, you know say it's on a darker character and, and it actually looks sort of like the, the design is glowing then if we saw the character in the shade like oh it's not actually glowing it's just a tattoo on their bum or it actually is glowing and they're a radioactive pony which I think this character might be uh, I don't know mm. <laughs> that's the only reason why it sort of works is because this, this character seems sort of supernatural in fact they may be a vampire looking at the bottom left <laughs> you can you can see I've, I've just chucked a little bit of like low opacity big brush like big soft brush like over mm -hmm. the top of it and I'll like flick between it a little bit Mostly like focusing in the green, but also like brightening up the red a little bit in places. And I think that kind of helps with the glowy sort of aspect that you're sort of going for. 
maybe a little bit. I don't know. In general, as a reference sheet, let's take a look at the sort of layout of things and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I think it's maybe it's uh, maybe a little bit difficult to sort of understand at a glance what all these colors should be. Mm -hmm. So what I'm getting is that's the eye, that's the coat, uh, the, the feathers kind of change. Yeah, that's the color the feathers go yeah. through. That's the this green color. Basically, the fact that we're even having this debate is like it, it, you should be able to just immediately tell. Um, it, it it can be very very space consuming on a ref sheet because if you can just shove a bunch of color blobs like this in a sheet, it uh it, it it's great. But having to actually label everything takes up a lot of space. And I've been doing a lot of ref sheets recently, so I know that in fact the one that we just critique was for a ref sheet as well. Um, but it, it helps a lot to at least be like, this is the coat, this is the underside of the hoof. Like if there's something specific like that, like wing the feathers fade on the wings, it's it's important to label that. Um, yes, people can sort of figure it out, but it, it, it helps to not have to take the time to do that. Uh, and especially if the, the drawing can be clean enough and unshaded enough that you can color pick directly from the drawing. I think most people do that because it's the most sort of assured way and easiest way to get the colors off. Um, so it helps to be able to do that. And, and then at the side, you can have like, this is the coat, this is the main, this is the main highlights, this is the eye, and this is the shade on the eye. <laughs> Yeah, it it doesn't need to be like a lot, like you know, just like a simple, yeah. simple little label between each uh, set of colors will work, something like mm -hmm. that. I can try and find an example of what I have done because I have done somewhere it's like I put the colors in like a big long like line, but that can sometimes be hard to fit in. So sometimes it is just in a, in a blob, but and sometimes you do need to zoom in on my rough sheets to read the text. But that's if you're doing so, it's because you specifically need to take those colors off and. Uh, slap them on your drawing for reference. <laughs> I'd, I'd be interested in seeing sort of how this tattoo uh, works Here we go. from other directions. That, mm -hmm. that might be something to like look at including. You could even, um, I've seen people do is when they have intricate things that wrap around stuff, you basically unwrap it so you could draw like a large rectangle and then show what your tattoo would look like on a flat surface just so it might be easier mm. to understand so people can take that and like, okay, so this is the general design I need to get on like a wrapped area. Let me deselect. Also, right. just as a quick anatomy thing, um, be careful with how far back you put this neck. It's basically hitting the middle of the back. Uh, and it's great to have big old fluffy chests, just a, uh, Smidgen, who did a smidgen? Uh, let me see if I can just bloop, bloop, grab that. Oh, wait, I can't do it because I'm not on the layer. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just just move it forward. Basically, you're 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 gonna want to meet into the circle over here instead of way back. Exactly. Boom. 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 And, and then you can still get all that wonderful chest fluff. Not to, not to worry, you won't lose that. Yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah, chest fluff. I'm liking this um the layout of hooves and stuff. Pretty interesting. Pretty mm -hmm. cool. Some examples of slapping colors and what I typically do. Those last two were kind of more effort, but um, what I usually do is I just use a layer with the Unclip Studio Paint, which I uh, believe is what you use. LD uh, mm -hmm. needs no, to move. Sorry. Oh yeah. I, I sat him outside of the view, sorry. <laughs> Way outside. I was just I was just putting examples of, of how, how I sort of slap colors on. The first one I put, which is on the bottom left there, is still they're just sort of clumped into a corner of the picture. And I, the, the other two, I lined them up down the side. But it, whatever works best for the composition you're going for, it doesn't need to be organized. But I've, you can see I do a thing like the eyes where there's a gradient. I do this sort of thing uh, where you have like the, um, the sort of, the main color and the secondary color with like a fade going between them, but you can see like the you can see that there's this like separation, um. So you can easily color pick them and the flex. I give like the little sort of color like that, that's kind of how they they're shaped in my character's eyes. So, uh, similar to what you did on yours, where you've got the eye base and then like the pupil and then the two sort of, uh, the pineapple wedge, flex colors. <laughs> um, yeah. 
but it, it helps just to, to name things. Uh, there have been some where it's gotten kind of complicated. Um, uh, I, I, I think it was, uh, I think it was on my raccoon set. It has got a lot of times. <laughs> um, there was, I can't remember. There was one ref sheet where it was like, oh, the, this and that, and that everything had to be specifically labeled because it was quite complex. But um, hopefully it, it won't be, but it, it helps just to, to get those reasons because otherwise, you know, if I'm having trouble trying to figure out how to label everything, but I believe people have trouble figuring out how to understand what I've put. <laughs> um, but what I do is I put, um, I use a new layer and I believe you use Clip Studio if I remember our conversation before. But if you are, cool. Uh, what I do is I will use a layer option because uh, it took us way too long to discover this, but it's been like the best thing that we've ever discovered. Uh, the uh, layer property window has this little effect section and there's the first button on there is border effect and it'll basically just add an outline to the layer which is so so helpful so like anytime that we've like like you know you select like the whole color folder and lineup folder and then to get like the silhouette of the character and then like expand the selection and fill it with like white or whatever if you're trying to get like the the border effect and you have to go through and like clean up all of the all of the little like corners that don't turn into spikes properly and bits that don't round properly and transparency issues uh whereas if you just use the border effect it's like super easy and so what i do it, it helped a lot with doing uh these because what i used to do was to, i would i would use like a black pen and just use my mouse and i'd click make the brush like one or two sizes smaller click to erase on the transparency color to make like a ring and then i would just go in and i would have to like use like a different layer underneath and then paste all the colors in it just got like a mess this with the layer border you just put the colors on and give it a black border and it, it just works and it's much easier so then you just have to label it with some text and you're done all right so well, so I think oh. the, or just uh, otherwise i think the sort of layout you've got is pretty nice i think it's good I really like your fangs. I think they're super cute. Funny teeth. Good teeth. Good teethers. <laughs> All right, shall we move on to our next picture? Let's do that thing. Oh, I was muted. I was saying heck yeah. Okay. Heck yeah. <laughs> we felt it. We, f we felt it in the spirit. So our last Love picture Love submitted Pony. is by Pictriker. Pictr yeah, someone th something like that. Uh, I wanted to submit to this piece of the stream. I wanted to improve the feeling that this pony's head has fur. For it, I want to, uh, used a base layer, a clipping layer for tone scraping, and a second for clipping layer uh, using the rake brush for emulating fur. <laughs> okay, don't. <laughs> Quick, someone get easy. I... Yep. This, this, yeah, this reminds me so much of art that I made. Well, there's one specific picture because I found like a technique for making like soft fur stuff in it, on GIMP, and it was to do with like, I think you start with like a noise layer and then you do like a, a blending, blurring brush smudgy thing to like make it look all furry. And I basically made something like this where it's like a fluff ball with like the eyes and like, you know, sort of like stereotypical chibi face. That I put on with like some sparkly eyes and a, a the colon D smiley mouth on, uh, but I didn't really know how to to draw a face onto something that was furry, so it just ended up looking like stickers on a fluff ball. Um, but, but you know, it, it all sort of leads into, uh, you know, less is more sometimes. And drawing a character like this, you unless you specifically want to go for some uh, for a very specific thing, um, which in this case would be. Uh, Flufflepuff the CGI movie um, it, which it's you usually want to go for less is more and there are ways that you can make a character look soft without making the entire thing furry and it's it, 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 I know it's very tricky at first because you look at things and think well especially with, with digital painting which it looks like the sort of fur on this is more of a painting sort of thing than than you know traditional like line art it's it's easy to think, well, how can I represent there being fur without just literally covering the whole thing? But it, there are definitely ways to make it more subtle um, and not sort of overpowering. And it, it might help you to get things like the face to sort of blend in a bit more. I'm not sure mm. if the face, if you if this was like actually part of 
the main drawing proper if, or if you drew it on there as like a placeholder or something because it's the the way that you did render the sort of fur and like the shading on it and everything uh, though subtle is is very nice and then the the lines here look a bit less uh fitting to the, to the sort of softness of everything around it um and i i was looking at this as well the one of the first things i sort of noticed about the picture is that you've got these these things the eye goes like this but then the lashes are going at this angle and i was like oh the lashes are still going around the eye and they're ignoring the fact that this is here but this isn't just like green color this is this is the cheek the eye is actually being sort of pressed up because uh typically if the cheek is doing this it's probably because there's a much bigger smile and it's pushing pushing the cheek up up in this direction um the, so you have kind of a small smile i'm not really sure if the the puffed cheeks are necessary but they're not like intrusive you can still you can still do them I'll just maybe do slightly differently and then change those uh change the way those sort of lashes are mm. are placed. They'd be they'd be like this. Although you, you can do you don't have to do them as uh, thin streaks like I've done. You can do them as blobs, but this is yeah. where the positioning would be. So when when you're drawing your sort of base shape that everything's going inside, think think about the the fur the little bits and tufts and all that sort of stuff like this. So you know, you have you have some, you know, limb or whatever and like all the fur is just like, you know, laid down against it and that sort of thing. When you're gonna usually get these sort of like tufts and stuff is when you have like say you have like this and the fur is like still laying flat against it, but it, it because the surface is sort of moving, it's gonna be like, you know, gonna end up in these like little all this sort of stuff. Oh, so yeah. when you, yeah, uh, Zom, Zom needs to expand the canvas. I was going to say, I'm, I'm hoping that we actually what oh. we're doing actually visible here. But... Thank you, Zom. Thank you. So yeah, like you have a you have a flat piece of body or whatever, and the fur is like all flat against it, and then when you have like a curved piece, the fur is still going to be like flat against the body. But because the body is moving, that's you're going to end up with these like you know little sticky outy bits and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So when you actually draw your sort of face shape and all that sort of stuff, you can take that into consideration. And for example, right here on this cheek, you're moving from like this sort of a shape down to this sort of a shape. So there's going to be like a kick out of fur here. You can mess around with that there. Same thing over here. There's like a little bit of a curve here. And you can just kick it out a little bit more for like fun. So you can do that. And you can basically like use this to sort of help decide where to chuck the and have it look natural, I guess, you know? Because it's it's not gonna be, you know, absolutely everywhere unless it's like fluff or buff or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can use this to sort of, you know, refine exactly where you chuck your fluff. Mm -hmm. Sort of kind of thing. It's it's hard to do this sort of very small, leaning towards realistic -y sort of a style, and then combine it with um, this sort of yeah line work kind of thing. So this is a good technique. Cool, it's fun, it's interesting. It might be good to try messing about with like keeping the details bigger, or like you know using bigger brushes to like you know mess about with like the placing the detail and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. and see kind of sort of where you end up and all that kind of thing because you want your fluff details and all that sort of stuff to sort of match stylistically with the other info that you're going to put on the you know picture mm -hmm. so you know for example Zaya's got this so if I was doing like fluff things, I'd probably like try to mess it out with like stuff like this because it's you know gonna match decently with the with the sort of uh, line work that he's got and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Another bit of what I've done here is sort of just looking at how to sort of build the face, and I'd, I'd, I'd recommend going back to the, the moment that you could see the picture at least and. 
which which will totally be fine and just watch how i sort of built like the eyes and, and maybe try to forget about how long it took me to get them to be symmetrical but uh <laughs> but look at everything else uh, I was just looking at how to sort of build this expression you're trying to make. It, it's not exactly what you're trying to do. I didn't do a very good job. job is sort of messed up at the end there. But I was looking at, oh, they got this kind of like calm sort of tilted eye look. Like, how can we make that look a bit more sort of um, relaxed looking? Like the eyes feel a bit more um, a bit sort of natural. Uh, although I, th I think I ended up there. Stop changing my tools, Aggie. Um, and they're going a bit away from what you were trying to do originally. I think their face should be more tilted up a bit, but I think you get the idea anyway. Um, I was sort of making it a bit uh, less symmetrical, so the face is sort of tilted a little bit. The smile is sort of more smirking, and you can see it's sort of pushing this. Uh, oops, that's white. This cheek up a little bit more than this one, uh, and then sort of tilted the eyebrows with the the eye. I shouldn't bother changing it. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. This it's uh oh yeah and, and the irises as well making like the sort of big pupils if they if they're really going for this sort of like amorous look or sort of puppy dog eyes or like whatever whatever it is you're doing here I think would benefit from having the pupils be like really big and sort of watery so you sort of have them fill up a lot of the iris and maybe put a bit of extra shine maybe three shine dots instead of two make it really have that sort of like cute sea look. It works for cute, it works for romance, it works for, please let me have that cookie. It works for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> when, whenever I'm sort of doing eyes, what I'll do is I'll have the eyes, and then on like a separate layer kind of above, I'll have like the irises. And then what I'll do is I'll just yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah, select them and move them about and sort of see... Can you see them moving about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can and see it when you let go, I think. I'll or just, it. like, move, move them about and experiment a bit. And also, between moving them about, I'll flip the image. Because, move, like, yes. moving them about and then flipping will, like, show you how your irises are correct and how they're incorrect, like, a lot more easily than sort of anything else. So that's what I tend to do. It helps. Yeah. And then when you want the sort of iris, the the eyelids to be lowered, you can do that. But it's always good, which uh, is what I did earlier, to draw the full eye shape first, and then do things like the upper and lower eyelids, because it helps you get a better understanding of where everything is placed and proportioned. All right, then. Anyone this else have any other thing. art they'd like to fire at us? Any other questions they'd like to ask? I think this character appearing wants to steal my cookies rather than <laughs> hoping to be given one. Very possible. Yeah, they got a bit of a cookie. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, we're going to call it a day. So thank you all for coming. And we'll see you again next week. Goodbye. Bye. Ooh.